we look to that for at what a Christian or a child of God is not supposed to do about politics if this is the definition of politics. If it is to help attain happiness for the citizens, if it is helping to authoritative allocate resources, and the word is authoritative in that what the people are saying they want is what you are going to distribute to them. That is the meaning of the word authoritative. The authoritative doesn't mean that there is somebody in power who is ruling and commanding, that's a no. The, the context of authoritative, as David used to use it, means that the citizens authorize what needs to be done. What needs to be done. And so it tells us that politics is about peace. It's about attainment of happiness. And therefore has nothing to do with war. Or those who go beyond and insult and kill and maim are not doing politics, but are doing something else. And that is why we decided to look at these two weeks about what politics are all about, especially as we are in queue by this morning and others are going to join to vote, we should have this at the back of our mind, that politics is about peace, it's about attainment of happiness, it's about giving our authority to a group of people to ensure that there is shared distribution, fair distribution of our wealth. The civil systems. We learned about these negative things that a child of God, a Christian, should not involve him or herself in regarding politics. And the first one was we shouldn't equate the biblical kingdom of God with any human political party or nation. We must maintain the distinctiveness between God's kingdom and the kingdoms of this world. It's very clear. No matter how others will put it, no matter how others want to fuse the two, the Bible is clear on this stand that the kingdom of this world is not the kingdom, cannot be equated to the kingdom of God, that Jesus supervises, that Jesus superintends, king of kings and lord of lords over the whole world from heaven. As he said, my kingdom is not of this world. And so as children of God, as we are involved in the politics, and the kingdom of this world, we should remember that we have the superior kingdom belonging to Christ, which is spiritual. And therefore, we should not equate my kingdom of uh, the world to the kingdom of God. Again, we also learned that we shouldn't elevate a politician to messianic status. That we should never elevate a politician to messianic status. That is why. It doesn't take long that we are highly disappointed because we are able to raise a politician as if he's God. That he was going to do things to satisfy our ego, our inner feelings and cravings. No, it is only God. God has given us only one message, Jesus Christ. He is the one who will be able to satisfy our inner cravings, spiritually and physically. And therefore, we should never elevate a politician to messianic status. Again, we also learned that we shouldn't forget that our ultimate security is in the unshakable kingdom of God. Our ultimate security is in the unshakable kingdom of God. It's not in any worldly kingdom. It doesn't matter whether the UN has sent soldiers to where and where. Security only lies with God. And when we rely on Him, He will be able to grant us security. And why? Even if there are billions of soldiers or military to guide us, the time is coming when all this world will vanish, it will be shaken. And there is only one kingdom that cannot be shaken. That is the kingdom of God. Again, we also learned not to bring the polarization of partisan politics into the family of God. That we should ensure that we don't use politics to bring polarization among people. For that is abomination to the Lord Almighty. Everybody has the freedom of conscience before God. And we must guide against allowing political perspectives to divide the church. And brethren, again, we also say that as children of God, we should not demonize anyone. Every person has been created in the image of God. And Christians must not demonize or dehumanize other people whether we agree with them politically or not. We learned also that. Point number six, 
We also said we should not engage in angry, hostile confrontation. By this time, you may be in a queue, others are forming, and you should ensure that you don't engage in any angry, hostile confrontation with a person in front of you, or behind you, or beside you. Vote peacefully. And remember that God is asking us that whatever comes from our mouth should be seasoned with salt. It should encourage, it should build up, rather than destroy or bring about war. Again, we also learned, don't become so intertwined with one political party that you forfeit your independence. That it is very surprising to realize where somebody will call himself a Christian or a child of God and will be stuck to one political party. It doesn't matter whether he does wrong or not. Something very negative or wrong being practiced by a political party, but a Christian will continue to vote for that party or is stuck to that party to the time that it has reached a point where we normally say that if you take a particular flag of a party and you wrap it around a an animal and place it in a specific place, some people will vote for it, some town will vote for it, that's unfortunate. When you are children of God, you speak the truth and you become objective. And so when it happens like this, then people will begin to listen to you when you are sending the gospel. It means you are not biased. Again, don't allow yourself to support attempts to divide races. Not at all, male and female, rich and poor, young and old. Partisan politics often divide society. People play the ethnic drum. And whenever they do that, you should know that they are not doing politics. They are doing something else. They are becoming selfish, arrogant. They are becoming selfish for their stomach only. And they don't care what the consequence of what they are doing. It is rather, politics rather brings us together. It rather unites us. And when we go with the word of God, then we should understand that when Jesus came, he even removed the tent that was dividing human beings and God and also remove the, the, the tent between the, the Jews and the Gentiles and say so we are all one, no Jew, no Greek, we are all together as the church is today. And therefore any attempt by anybody to play the ethnic drum in the name of winning political votes is unfortunate. And that person should be watched and if possible, even voting should never be done for that party or that person. Any party or any group of person that is interested in playing the ethnic drum, we should watch that person because he might not be from God. And therefore, we should shy away from all kinds of activities because we are all one, one beautiful nation, one nation Ghana of different tribes all coming together, complementing one another for the building of this great nation. In the same way in the church, God has brought so many people together to sit on the same pew and the same bench. How beautiful it is. And therefore, any person who wants to divide creatures God has created and respect to diversity should be watched and free from. And we should ensure we don't engage ourselves also in the same way. Again, we learned not to equate the constitution and policy of government to contain absolute morality regulations. If you want morality regulations absolutely, then go to the Bible. We also learned that do not think that legislating moral laws in government is the same as winning the hearts of men for Christ. That Christians and children of God should not shy away their duty of sending the gospel to every creature, thinking that until they are able to win political seats and therefore it becomes do and die affair, that I'm a Christian, I must win this seat. I thought that will be war. And my purpose is that when I win it, I'll be able to implement godly policies. Don't deceive yourself. Winning the hearts of men is not the same as in legislating laws in constitution and forcing people to obey. God has given mandate to the church that through the church the manifold wisdom of God be sent everywhere. Yes, we admit that godly men when they are ruling ensure that there is peace, as even the Bible says. When the righteous reigns, the people rejoice. It is true. And in this context, however, 
we should understand that God has given a special mandate to the church and the church only to proclaim the gospel with hearts, demolish the, 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 the army of the devil and bring people from the powers of darkness. And so we should not shy away from that duty. Again, today we want to look at the do's, some of the do's of a Christian therefore. We've learned about some domes last week. What about the do's of a Christian? What should we do as a child of God towards national politics according to the word of God? The first one is to pray for government authorities. To pray for government authorities. If we look at 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, that is what it says. That we should do all we can to pray for government authority. And the Bible said that that is the most first thing. The first thing. When we say the first thing, that, that is serious. First thing, that is 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. It reads, I exhort therefore that first of all, first of all, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Do you want to please God? Do you want to be accepted before God and our Savior Jesus Christ? Then it says, pray for those in authority. Pray for government. You don't go and fight for government. Rather, you pray for government. You don't go and insult in the name of a government, but you pray for a government. You don't go and steal ballot boxes and try to ensure that you use all four means for your candidate to win, but rather you pray for government. This is pleasing, pleasing in the sight of God. And that is what is asking us. And we hope that the Lord will touch your heart this morning that you ensure that even where you are, you are, you begin to pray for government. You begin to pray for a political institution. You begin to pray for those in authorities. You begin to pray for the peaceful elections that we are backing on today. Pray, pray, pray. For God is saying that it is pleasant unto him when his children pray for those in authority, kings and all. That is our portion. The same as listeners. The second thing we are supposed to do is to be subject to the government unless it asks us to disobey him. The Bible is asking us to be subject to the government. And this is very clear. In Romans chapter 13 verse 1, Romans 13 verse 1, it is stated very clearly how we are supposed to be subject to all those in authority. It reads, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Hallelujah. So the Bible admonishes children of God to be subject to the government unless it asks us to disobey him. That is another do that you are supposed to do. So if we say that today we are supposed to go and vote, we become obedient since it is not against the word of God that we go and express our opinion our now choice regarding who we want to be in government. And it is peacefully done. And in the same way, subjective to the authority and the constitution that asks us to do. The same as listeners. This is very important for us to know. First Peter chapter 2, verse 13 to 14, also says the same thing. First Peter chapter 2, verse 13 to 14 also says the same thing. And what does it say? He said, Submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors 
as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evil doers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as a free and not using your liberty for a cloak. When you move on to verse 17, it says that under all men love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. First Peter chapter 2, verse 17. And so as a child of God and a Christian, not only will you pray for the king, but you also become subject to the constitution, to the law, to the king authority. So far as it doesn't ask you to disobey God, and also honoring all men, including the king. The same as sisters. Point number three of a do of a Christian regarding national politics is to evangelize the entire world and disciple government leaders when possible. Our lot as children of God is to evangelize the entire world and disciple government leaders when possible. That is what we are supposed to do. And again, in First Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 to 4, it says the same thing. Because the command Jesus gave in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, Matthew 20, 19, to disciple all nations. Disciple all nations. That is the straight command. And so that is what we are supposed to do. Paul's example with Felix, Festus, Agrippa, and others are clear testimonies how he was able to convince those in authorities. Do you want the leader to be God-fearing? Do you want him to implement policies that will enhance freedom of worship in your country? Then evangelize him. Then evangelize him. Send the good news to him or her. That is our portion. Not to fight, not to insult. Distinguished listeners. Again, do not, to do right and cooperate with government authorities whenever possible. If you are a child of God and a Christian, anything good you have to associate yourself with. You become patriotic, you become a national person who is interested in building up the nation. You help in whatever good thing that needs to be done in the building of our great nation, Ghana of ours. And that is right. That is your portion. So you cooperate with government authority whenever possible for anything that is good to be done. Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. Let us look at verse 1 to 2. Titus 3, 1 to 2. It reads, Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to be ready to every good work. One of those good work is that today you should vote. It's a good work. That is a peaceful way of electing government. A peaceful way. It's a good work. So you all join the queue peacefully, prayerfully, and cast your ballot peacefully. That is a requirement that you are supposed to do as a good citizen and a good child of God before him. To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. That is verse 2. Titus chapter 3 verse 2. To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. As you are in the queue, Please speak evil of no man. Don't be a brawler. Don't throw any bro anywhere. Be gentle. Speak peaceably. Show meekness unto all men. This is a requirement of a child of God. In so doing, you will be seen as really a child of God, and God will bless you and this great nation of ours. Five. Influence the type of government you will want to win so that he upholds godly purposes by becoming light of the world 
and salt of the earth. Influence the type of government you will want to win so that he oppose godly purposes by becoming light of the world and salt of the earth. Yes, as a Christian, you should be able to influence the type of government you will want to rule. You should be the type who fear God. You should be the type who obeys God's command, who does his will, who does everything even though as human beings and sinners struggles, strive to be under the umbrella of God, who hates the things God hates and loves the thing God loves. It doesn't matter whether a nation will cajole him to give you money in order to turn the constitution to an evil way. He will stand firm and say, no, the word of God says this. This is against humanity and therefore I will not do this. A government that fears God, a government that obeys the fundamental teachings of Christ or of God. Those are fundamental. Morally speaking, every nation's constitution is influenced by the Bible or the Word of God. And therefore, anyone who comes and tries to go plainly against certain strict things that is in the scriptures is not worthy to be voted for. Any government that will come and promote gayism, when men and men should sleep, lesbianism, and call it freedom of worship, is not worthy to be voted for. And all these things continue to give us advice that even though it's not worthy, we don't say that with arms or with guns. We do that with voting peacefully, that we are influencing government influencing the type of government that we want to uphold principles of God. The same as this. If we're able to do this, oh, what a wonderful nation we shall have. When all the people pray for those in authorities, when all the people are subject and humble before government, unless it asks them to disobey God, when all the children of God are interested in evangelizing the entire world and discipling even government leaders so that they will think and act right, that is wonderful. And when all the people do the right and cooperate with government authorities whenever possible and are queuing peaceably to cast their vote quietly, praying at the same time, ensuring there is no food to waste from their mouth to anybody and are not ready to fight when all Ghanaians influence the type of government that we want to win so that he opposes godly purposes by becoming light of the world and sort of the earth. Hallelujah. Then God will bless us. God will bless this nation. God will bless Africa and God will bless the world. God will bless the church because the church is made up of citizens that are within this country and therefore his kingdom will be broadened and all shall flee from the powers of darkness into the kingdom of our dear son exercise your right today to vote and see it is an opportunity to be counted opportunity to be marked in heaven in the book of life how you dealt with this exercise how you dealt peace up with this how you did it godly, as God has commanded you to do. And after that, ensure you continue to pray for all those with authorities and ensure you become subject to authority and ensure that you maintain the peace throughout, that is during and after this election. And after that, remember, the unshakable kingdom of God, you will continue to be part of it by accepting that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior who came to die for us. For our sake he was killed, buried, and for our sake he will resurrect them. Prove it to us that we shall also resurrect when he comes again and will live forever. This is the message we should pursue and why we are trusting that all are evangelists, including the authority, to the glory of our Lord. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful year. And have a wonderful election day. Let it be wonderful so that we said all over that yes, children of God 
are really in Ghana. And God will bless us and will move us forward. All our endeavors shall be prosperous because we fight for peace and we maintain peace and we are committed to peace because Jesus Christ, he is the Prince of Peace and therefore wherever he is, there is unity, there is oneness, there is love. May the good Lord continue to be with us as we are exercising our franchise today. As we continue to do this, let the word of God richly dwell in our hearts and let us speak, speak peaceably to one another. The person in front of you in the queue, bless him with the blessing of God. And the one after you, bless him with the blessing of God. For we are all children of God, peaceably, and the Lord will bless us. May the good Lord bless us throughout. So at the end of this day and this week, we we'll hear good news of peace throughout. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Once again, this has been the Oracles of God radio broadcast, a biblical program that is run and sponsored by the Churches of Christ, which come away every Wednesday, 5.30 a.m. Make a day with us, same time, God will next week, as God continues to unravel His priceless oracles. You are warmly invited to worship with Churches of Christ all over the country, the pillar of truth, where an untreated word of God is shared and God is worshipped in spirit and in truth. You may want to contact us on 02455-27658 or send us a message on coc.radio at yahoo.com or we are also located on Facebook at Church Radio. I am once again your brother Eric Daako. Now may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify us through and through. May our whole spirit, source and body become blameless at the appearance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Till we meet again, stay rich and blessed. Amen and good morning. Bye-bye,